In this episode, we'll talk about the X5 U6 wireless microphone system. First of all, this entire episode is being recorded with the U6 right here. The receiver is sitting on top of my Panasonic GH5, which is then feeding the audio into the camera. So you're hearing this. We have not done any sort of post-processing except to loudness normalized to minus 23 LUFS. The reason for that is we want you to be able to hear what it sounds like directly out of the transmitter, receiver, and into camera. All right, what is this system? It is a consumer-grade wireless microphone system. It offers a single channel per receiver, so no, you cannot buy two transmitters and send it to one receiver. You need to have a receiver for each transmitter. It has a built-in microphone, very affordable price, and I would think probably the closest competitor is the original Rode Wireless Go. So this is the transmitter right here. It has, we're using the inbuilt microphone. There is no external microphone option. Really, really straightforward for a fairly affordable price. Who's it for? I think it really fits for people that just want to make talking head videos like this, maybe TikTok videos, or maybe vlogs. Let's run through the pros and then we'll come back and cover the cons as well. First up, very affordable here. So we've got a link down below if you want to see the current pricing. I would definitely suggest you check that out. This is a single channel microphone system, so it's just one microphone. So important to keep in mind whether or not that fits your use case. Simple operation, there are no menus, just a power button channel and output level settings. What's different about this is that it's a 2.4 gigahertz system, which is actually not that different. The different part is that in this case, you can choose amongst four different channels. So if you're getting dropouts or anything on one channel, you can switch the transmitter and the receiver to another channel, and that may solve the problem. In one case, when I did my indoor distance test, I did find that on channel number one, where I started in the room that had a wireless access point, I was getting all sorts of dropouts. When I switched to the next channel, no problems whatsoever. This is an important thing because on most of the other consumer grade wireless microphone systems that also use 2.4 gigahertz, they handle all that for you. Now, while that sounds really convenient, the problem is in some cases it just doesn't work. Uh, so what's nice about this is that you have a little bit more manual control. You can choose when to change a channel. I like that. Decent indoor and outdoor distance performance. Let's go ahead and give you a sample of each. I'm going to go that way through some doors. This tends to be a pretty tough thing for 2.4 gigahertz systems. Let's see how we do here. First of all, I'm going to head out the door here. I am going to walk to the other end of the house and up the stairwell. You'll definitely be able to hear when I'm in the stairwell because it will be incredibly reverberant. And now we're going to head up the stairwell. So here we are going up the stairwell. If you wanted to hear reverb, here's some reverb for you. All right, at the top of the stairs, I'm going to come through another door. Oh, hi. Hi, how are you? Great, thanks. Okay, uh, loud air conditioner here. Walking toward the other end of the, home, the house where I started, in fact, to the room just above the room that we started in. Now I'm in the room just above the room that we started in. And walking to the other end of the room, we're at the very end here. So this is in the room directly above the one, one that we started in. I'm going to head back down now and see how well the system does at holding on to that signal through doors and walls and floors and ceilings and all of the things that make up the structures in which we work and live and play and whatever else we do. Okay, back down the stairs again, reverb in the stairwell. All right, down to the bottom of the stairwell, walking back across to the room where we started. And here we are in the room where we started. All right, that little sample will tell us how well this microphone system might hold up in at various distances and through walls indoors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
All right, so this is evidently 30 feet from the camera right here. Um, each of my strides is about, um, about a yard, which is three feet. Uh, really, I'm quite tall, so. <laughs> Uh, in any case, we're just, this is my very first test with the X5U6 wireless microphone system. This is the transmitter right here, and I'm transmitting to the receiver, which is sitting on top of my Panasonic GH5S, which is just over there. Let's take 10 more steps. I'm going to turn away. So right now we're line of sight. That is to say, this transmitter emitter is right in line of sight of the receiver. We don't have any walls or anything. We're in the wide open here. So I'm going to take 10 more steps that way. That'll be another uh, approximately 30 feet, so a total of 60 feet. Let's see what we get. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so this should be about 60 feet. That looks about right. Um, hopefully, we still have some signal here. I'm going to guess at this point, if I, if I turn away, as soon as I turn away, that we're dropping the signal, but the, uh, the test will actually tell us that. Let's take 10 more steps and see what we get. Okay, this should be about 90 feet right now. That looks about right. And this is pretty special case. Um, <laughs> again, just trying to understand what the limitations of this system are. So let's go ahead and start walking our way back and see how things do in terms of holding on to the signal and also the audio quality. We have a little bit of a breeze here, just a gentle breeze, but um, we do have the fur cover that comes with the system on top of the microphone just so you can get a sense for how that sounds and how effective it is at preventing wind from creating distortion when it blows across the microphone capsule. It is powered both in the transmitter and the receiver by internal batteries, and we were able to get four hours and 28 minutes in our battery life test. So that's pretty decent. Again, that you have to kind of consider whether that fits your use case or not. One thing that's nice about this system relative to any of the other systems I've tested, with ex I guess maybe with one exception, is that the transmitter is smaller, substantially smaller than the Rode Wireless Go and smaller than some of the others. The only one that I've used that's quite a bit smaller than this is the Pico mic, although this sounds a lot better than the Pico mic, at least the original Pico mic. There is an inbuilt microphone and there is no 3.5 millimeter input. We'll come back and talk about that in the cons potentially but just really simple. You're not gonna have any dangling wires to deal with, straightforward. The kit includes a removable clip, which also is a nice feature because it allows you to orient it uh, in two different directions. So if it's not working one way, you can put it another way to sort of optimize it for the particular clothes that your person is wearing. Also includes the TRS cable to feed the audio out to cameras, a TRRS adapter, so if you want to feed the audio to your phone, you could do that if your phone has a 3.5 millimeter input or you have an adapter to get 3.5 millimeter into your phone. Also includes a fur windshield to keep the microphone from distorting when you're recording out in the wind. It also comes with this adhesive loop tape, which is really nice because if you want to be able to hide this, that gives you a few more options. It has adhesive on the back of the loop tape, you put that wherever you want, and then there's inbuilt hook tape on the back of the transmitter. So you can just attach that, very simple. And then of course it comes with a nylon pouch to store all of that. To use the fur cover, you actually twist it into place. It's a little bit fiddly to get it on there, but it does hold really, really well. And it works nicely in light breezes like in our outdoor test. Now the build quality of this is 100% plastic. <laughs> However, I will say I had dropped it uh, two times, once onto a concrete floor, once onto a tile floor, and it did fine. X5 offers a one-year warranty, and I would suggest you check the link down below for the current pricing. Right now, at the time of this review, it's coming in about $20 less expensive than the original Rode Wireless Go. All right, there are some cons, and we need to cover these. First of all, the battery is not user replaceable. I am hopeful that X5 would be able to replace the battery if at some point it stops charging we'll get you a comment down below when we hear back from them on how that works. Both the transmitter and the receiver have USB micro inputs for charging. Not a huge fan of USB micro, but it works and that's probably 
partly why this is less expensive. There is no audio level input setting on the transmitter, so this is really optimized for spoken word recording and really not for really, really loud sounds. So if you're planning to do recording of some really loud sounds, maybe an opera singer, this is probably not the system for you. We did measure a practical noise floor sample just to get an idea of, you know, what kind of self noise this produces. So the way we did this is I recorded it in here, just some talking, and then I left a silent portion. And in this quiet room here, we have a bunch of sound blankets. We don't have a lot of other noise going on. So it's a pretty good location. And then I brought that into Adobe Audition, loudness normalized it to minus 23 LUFS, and then measured that silent portion. And that came out at minus 59 RMS max. So what does that mean in practical terms? For me, my standard is usually if it can get under minus 60, that's good. So this is kind of borderline. If you add a high pass filter in post, either in your video editing app or in something like Adobe Audition, you can get that down a little bit more. So that's worth noting. This is kind of borderline, but again, for the price, not surprising. Is it usable? Certainly for vlogs, it's usable. There's gonna be so much more noise or going on with a vlog, it won't matter. Um, if you're trying to do really clean studio-like recordings, that's when you might run into some issues. You may have to apply some noise reduction in post. Just like all of the other wireless microphone systems that I've used in this price range, it has a bit of a mid-range kind of boosted sound. It makes it so you're very understandable, but it does sound a little harsh in some cases. Certainly on my voice, I feel like it does. A little bit of EQ and post, clean that up as well. So pretty decent sound. If you wanted to use external microphones, that's not an option here. You have to use the inbuilt microphone or you're not using this system. Is that a problem? Again, that's use case dependent. So if that's something you need, then this is not the system for you. If you'd rather have the simplicity of not messing with cabled <laughs> lavalier microphones to plug in to your transmitter, this could be a good option. And then finally, you saw in the outdoor distance test that really you have to be within line of sight to hold a good uh, signal without dropouts, especially outdoors. Once you're indoors, you get a little bit more flexibility but outdoors, if you were planning to use all 90 feet of the available range, you're gonna to have to keep the transmitter on the front of the person who's facing the camera for it to work. As soon as they turn away, you'll start to get those dropouts. Now, for those that are considering this system, I think the main competitor again is the Rode Wireless Go. And the, the question is, is, well, which one would you recommend, Curtis? And my answer is this. I, it's kind of a toss up in terms of sound quality. They sound almost the same. If you wanna compare them, I recommend you open a new tab in your browser, pull up my Rode Wireless Go review, play that back, then pause it, come back to this one and listen and use your ears to decide if it sounds substantially better or worse. To my ears, they sounded about the same. Okay, not super amazing, but definitely usable. What the Rode has going in its favor, if this is important to you, is number one, you can connect external microphones. so. If that's important to you, that's an option on the Rode Wireless Go 2. And also, when you're working with the Rode Wireless Go 2, it tended to do a little bit better outdoors in terms of overall distance, and actually maybe even indoors. Not a huge night and day difference. If you're gonna be within 10 feet of the camera, maybe three meters of the camera, it isn't gonna make a difference which one you use probably. However, I would say in favor of the U6, number one, you get manual control over the channels. So if you are having dropouts where the wireless is kind of cutting in and out, you can change to another channel. You cannot do that on the Rode Wireless Go 2. It should theoretically be doing that on its own. Sometimes that didn't work out. Uh, and here you have some manual control. Also, if you are gonna be using the inbuilt microphone on the transmitter, which of course you're going to be doing on the U6, but if you were gonna do that on the Rode as well, this is a smaller transmitter, a little bit easier to hide, not quite so big and bulky. So hopefully that was useful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. If you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.